Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Now it's visible. So, first question related to this chapter would be pressure exerted by ideal gas. So, you have to derive this expression P is equals to 1 by 3 rho times V squared. From this part, you will be asked to explain or to obtain RMS velocity of gas. So, on rearranging, you will say V bar square equals to 3 times P divided by rho. On taking square root on both sides, you will get B bar square root under equals to root under 3 times P by rho. This quantity is called RMS velocity or root RMS velocity. So you may obtain RMS velocity from this part. Next question will be to define absolute zero, that is zero Kelvin. I had already defined you about this particular term using thermal kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals to three by two KBT. If you put T is equals to zero, randomness of gas will get stopped or you will say at this point there will be no existence of pressure temperature and volume so in general you can say there will be no existence of matter at this particular temperature absolute zero next there will be question regarding calculation of degree of freedom and next calculation of internal energy one more question related to degree of freedom will be on what factors degree of freedom of gas may depend upon? <clears throat> Let me just explain you. Suppose if you have monoatomic gas, just like helium, it will have only three degree of freedom. But in case of diatomic, such as H2 molecule, O2 molecule, nitrogen, chlorine, and so on, it will have five degree of freedom. So for this part, three degree of freedom due to translational, but for this, it will have translational plus rotational. In case of triatomic bench shape, it will have degree of freedom three due to translational and three due to rotational. But in case of carbon dioxide, which is linear in shape, still triatomic, but it will have only three translational and two rotational. So it will have five degrees of freedom. So on what factor from these part may define, degree of freedom may depend upon. First, number of particle in one molecule. In first part to monoatomic, only one particle having three degree of freedom. But in case of diatomic, we have two particles. So degree of freedom now becomes five. But for diatomic, just like water, we have six degree of freedom. So first we can say it will depend upon number of particle in one molecule. First, it will depend upon this part. Next, in case of water, which is bent shape, so it will have six degree of freedom. But in case of carbon dioxide, which is again triatomic, but it is linear in shape, so it will have only five degree of freedom. So from this, we can say it also depends upon geometry or shape of that particular molecule. So you will say, it mainly depend upon geometry of molecule, that is shape of molecule. And one more thing, it will depend upon temperature. Suppose you have diatomic molecule at low temperature, 
its bond will be strong enough. So there will be no any vibration in the molecule. But suppose on increasing temperature, bond get weakened. So now it will act as spring-like. So it will additionally tend to vibrate about their mean position to and fro. So in addition to translation and rotational energy, it will have a vibrational energy also. So we can say on increasing temperature, degree of freedom of gas will increase. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. In the same part, you will be asked, suppose for hydrogen gas at low temperature, it will have degree of freedom five. On increasing temperature, its degree of freedom becomes seven. Explain why. So you'll say on increasing temperature, bond in between molecule gets weakened. So vibrational energy of particle increases. So in addition to translational and rotational part, it will have ad additional vibration energy. So total degree of freedom on increasing temperature will increase by two. Matthew, is it clear? Yes, sir, yes. Okay. Next question will be, the last part of this chapter that is mean free path. You will be asked to define mean free path. Define mean free path. <coughs> Derive its expression. And from that part, you will be asked to define factors affecting mean free path. According to the result of this particular mean free path, it was lambda equals to one by root under two n pi d square, where n is number density and d is diameter of gaseous particle. We may transform this formula in some other form as well. Suppose density is equals to total mass by total volume. So total mass will be N multiplied by mass of each gaseous particle divided by total volume. Capital N divided by volume is called number density. So it will be termed as small n multiplied by m. So we may write number density is equals to density divided by mass of each gaseous particle. So if you put in this above expression, you will get lambda equals to m divided by root two times rho pi d squared. So from this part, we can say mean free path will be directly proportional to mass of gaseous particle. Mamuna, is it clear? Yes, sir. Again, we may transform this formula in some other form. Suppose, according to ideal gas equation, PV is equals to NRT, where N is number of mole. So we may write it as number of particle divide by Avogadro number PV times R into T. Now we may write it as P is equals to N divided by volume R divided by NA times T. This quantity is called number density. This quantity is called Boltzmann constant. So we may write it as number density times Boltzmann constant into T is equals to P. So number density from this part will be pressure divided by Boltzmann constant 
into t. If we substitute in place of number density in the above expression for lambda, you will get kb t divided by root under 2 p pi d squared. So from this, we may conclude mean free path <coughs> depends upon mass of gaseous particle, diameter square of gaseous particle, density, temperature, and pressure. So these are different variable term on which it may depend upon. Matthew, is it clear? Yes, sir. You may write it down. Just write it down this part. All done? Yes, sir. Ten seconds. But these are different questions you will be asked from this particular chapter that is kinetic theory of gas. Next, let me define you about thermodynamics. In this part, you will be asked <clears throat> mainly numerical from isothermal part and some theoretical question related to this on the basis of adiabatic process. So there will be question first, 
derived expression for work done by isothermal process. Next question will be, why adiabatic curve is more stiffer than isothermal? I define you slope of adiabatic curve is equals to gamma times slope of isothermal curve. That's why steeper or adiabatic curve is more steeper than isothermal curve. Next question will be to define zero law or to explain concept of temperature from this part. Next will be <clears throat> numerical related to any different process. Just one. Okay, <clears throat> I define you some numerical regarding fusion, vaporization. Just revise those terms and problem related to first law. dq is equals to du plus dw and <clears throat> concept of internal energy. Next and this part will be to define or there will be numerical on heat engine. In this part, you will be asked to derive efficiency. One is equals to Q2 divided by Q1 in terms of T2 minus T1. You are, you'll be asked to explain how this particular part transformed to this part. I define you by using the concept of adiabatic curve. Next. You will be asked on the basis of heat pump or refrigerator. How will temperature of room will be affected if door of fridge is kept open in Next question will be uh, related to this part. Define CP and CV. Why CP is greater than CV and derive its expression. So mainly these different questions will be asked from this part. Any doubt in any of these questions?
Uh, no, sir. No. You may be asked to find work done during isothermal process or during adiabatic process. There will be a problem related to these two isothermal and adiabatic on the basis of their action. If a process is occurring very fast, all of a sudden that will be termed as adiabatic. And if a process is very slow, then will be termed as isothermal. So under reversible and irreversible topic, there isn't any question? No, no. Okay. I think this is all about this entire chapter that is thermodynamics. Okay. Any more thing you will be asked, you have to ask from this part? Thermodynamics? No. Sir Fulla? No, sir. Okay. In this particular week, I think. There will be a test regarding these two terms. That is, first test will be based on simple harmonic motion and wave. Next will, test will be on these two chapters. And then next test will be on solids and fluid. Let me explain you about thumb product of matter also. Uh, sir, I have a question regarding kinetic energy. Can I ask? Yes. Uh, can you explain Maxwell distribution of speed of gaseous particle? Okay. This part. Yes, sir. Tell me your doubt regarding this particular graph. Or should I explain this whole? A oh, whole thing, sir. Okay. According to Maxwell, simply define according to velocity of gas or number of constant of gases particle in a particular vessel moving with these different velocity. So this is one by n to define its fractional part, dn by dv. So this whole term will define you nothing but how much fractional particle in a particular vessel moving with VMP velocity, V average velocity, and V RMS velocity. So from this graph, we can say VMP is at peak point. So there will be maximum number of particles in that volume which in which particle will be moving with VMP, that is most probable speed. Below that, or lesser than VMP, there will be particle moving with V average. And lesser than that, there will be particle moving with V RMS. So on the basis of number of particle, if you have to define ascending order or descending order in a particular sample, so you will say VMP will be maximum than V average than RMS. It means there will be most number of particle, gases particle moving with VMP than average velocity, and there will be least number of gases particle moving with RMS velocity. So we may define from this particular graph. Now the next graph is define you how we may define this particular curve for two different gases. So first is 
on the basis of molecular weight. According to the above formula, velocity of gas, BMP, V average, V RMS, is directly proportional to temperature. So, as the temperature of gas increases, so this particular curve will get shifted towards the right. It means velocity increases. Next, it is inversely proportional to molecular weight. Like in case of hydrogen, its molecular weight will be two. In case of helium, its molecular weight will be four. Oxygen, 32. Nitrogen, 28, and so on. So on changing molecular weight, this velocity gets shifted towards right or left. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So we may define these, these different terms related to this particular graph. Any more doubt? No, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is thermal properties of matter. Let me define you first term that is triple point in melting point boiling point I define you at constant pressure. Suppose melting of ice, it will be at zero degrees Celsius and at one atmospheric pressure. But if you increase or decrease pressure, the melting point and boiling point of a particular substance may get changed. So we may define a point that is triple point. It is the temperature and pressure at which all three state coexist together. That temperature pressure is called triple point. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So you will say the temperature and pressure or for a particular temperature and pressure for a fixed temperature and pressure, all three states of a matter coexist together only at that condition. This point is called triple point. Is it clear? Yes. Suppose if you have to define for water, suppose we have ice as zero degree Celsius, that is 273 Kelvin. So, to keep ice remain at a state ice, I have just increased pressure up to a particular point. Let's say this. It will remain exist in ice. Below it or above it, just above it, if you increase or decrease any of the quantity, it may get transformed into some other state. Next is
curve will be like this. So temperature will be 273.16 Kelvin and pressure will be about 654 ADM. At this particular part, all three state of water, that is water, vapor, and ice coexist with it. So this is ice, this is water, and this is vapor. So all three state of water Yes, sir. Can you write it down? Sir, how much pressure did you Just one minute. Let me confirm. Okay. Ramuna, do you have any idea? What, sir? What will be pressure for triple point of water? It will be about Done. So full written. One minute, sir. Sir, there is one question. That is yes. anomalous behavior of water. So what will be the answer for that? I define you from zero degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius. Volume of water will decrease and density of water will increase, which is uneven as compared to the rest of the whole matter. Since on increasing temperature, volume will expand and density will decrease. But in case of water, only between zero degree to four degrees Celsius, it behaves just opposite to that. That's why it is anomalous behavior of water. Is it clear? Yes, sir. I'll explain you in this part. So, Fulla, done. Yes, sir, done. Okay. There will be one more question related to a point. Suppose you will be asked how 
you will be able to slide or ski on ice. So you see, on applying pressure to ice, pressure and temperature will be directly proportional to each other. So on increasing temperature, let's say this is any skateboard and there is individual on it. So on applying pressure, temperature below it also increases and will causes or it will simply cause to melt ice below it. So on conversion of ice into water will provide lubrication to skate on this particular surface of ice. This phenomena is also called regelation. Why it is regelation? Suppose in first time, on applying pressure, temperature below it increases. which will melt ice into water. Further, on moving from this part to some new position, let's say this man has moved to this point. So the water formed by applying pressure now get in contact with surrounding ice. So again, it refreezes into ice. That's why it is called regelation. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Can you repeat again? Suppose there is a skate man on a skateboard at this point. So due to its weight, pressure at its bottom increases. On increasing pressure, temperature increases according to this relation. So on increasing temperature, ice below it will start to melt into water. And that water will provide lubrication for its motion from one point to another. So that this skate will easily slide on surface of ice from one point to another. Now, on moving this from this point to this, water or the melted water, get in contact with surrounding ice. So again, refreezes into ice. That's why this phenomena is called regelation. First, on applying pressure, due to increase in temperature, ice get melted into water. And then again, water due to its surrounding ice get refreezes into ice. This phenomena is called regelation. So it will help is skate to slide over it. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Matthew, any doubt? No. Next, there will be numerical on expansion of solid, that is linear expansion, aerial expansion, volumetric expansion. You will be asked to derive relation between alpha, beta, and gamma. And there will be question related to expansion length, area, volume, and density. So you may use the formula and try to calculate numerical related to this part. There was a question in Mamona's paper. Why we left some gap in between rails. Suppose this is a rail on which, or simply track of train on which train runs. So there will be some left gap in between these two rails. Why we left some gap? You say on increasing temperature, there will be expansion in this particular solid. 
So on expansion, it will tend to move towards this and will tend to move towards this. So they may get in contact due to expansion. That's why there'll be left gap at each junction. Is it clear? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Similarly, you must have observed, suppose this is any electric pole, this is any other electric pole. So at the last point, suppose this is electricity supply or line of electricity supply. At this end, there will be some pulley attached to it, holding this particular wire with some large weight. Why this weight is provided to this particular wire? So you'll say, to keep this particular wire get straightened always at during any season, like in summer, it get elongated. So it get acquire this shape due to its elongation. In winter, in winter, due to change in temperature, due to decrease in temperature, it gets straightened. So due to variation of season, there will be expansion and compression of wire. To hold it always straight, there must be some weight attached to this particular end to get a strengthened always. Is it clear? You must have observed this particular part in any railway station. If train is running on electricity over that. Safulla, is it clear? Yes, sir. There will be numericals on calorimetry on the basis of heat exchange, specific heat and latent heat. And you will be asked to find temperature of junction according to heat conduction, that is heat current. And in radiation part, you will be asked to define Newton's law of cooling and there will be numerical based on it. Only these different questions will be asked from this part. Any more doubt related to this chapter? Matthew? Uh, no, sir. Okay, so let's stop here for today. Yes, sir. We'll continue solids and fluid in next class, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so okay, sir. just revise till this part. Okay, we'll continue next class. Okay, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir? Yes? Uh, sir, could you send the PDF of oscillation chapter and kinetic theory since I was absent for a few days in that chapter revision? Uh, I haven't any PDF. You can take a screenshot of those two chapters if you. Okay, sir. Okay, just one minute. 